Hello, my name is Rob Nelson. Good morning. Um, today I want to talk about learning to learn and what that means. Uh, this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's a skill that I haven't always had, and I think it's the most important foundational skill for any of us in any industry. Uh, now, I've been working in IT for 20 years, and without the skill, I doubt I'd be where I am today, and I probably wouldn't even be in IT because it is a tough field if you can't learn. <laughs> To understand why it's so important to me, I want to take you on a trip back to my days in high school. I graduated in 1996, and I came out of high school feeling pretty good about my ability to learn. I didn't necessarily get the best grades. Uh, sometimes I slacked off on homework, but when it came, came time for exams, I usually did pretty good. So I felt um, I must have learned, because I did good on the test. And I had all these different subjects, so I must have learned how to learn. So, you know, great circular logic but I was only 17. Now, I felt really good going into college. Yeah, it's gonna be more difficult, it's more uh, complicated subjects, but hey, I learned how to learn. Now I just need to buckle down and do my homework and everything will be okay. So I went off to college. Two and a half years later, I was back home living with my parents and I dropped out of college because I wasn't doing very good. I was uh, retaking a lot of classes and um, decided it's time to stop racking up debt. So took the ball and went home. Now I had to figure out what was my problem. Other students were doing well, so it wasn't, wasn't the teachers, wasn't the subjects, wasn't the classroom. Uh, had to be something about me. Was I incapable of learning these subjects? Was I in the wrong major? I asked myself a lot of questions about that, about whether or not I was capable. And it took me a while to, to realize uh, it wasn't any of that. It was that platitude that you heard a lot as a senior in high school, hey, you just need to learn how to learn. But I wasn't very good at it. I just kind of assumed I had been. Now, in high school, for me, teaching followed one general pattern. Here's what we're going to learn. Let's learn it. Let's learn how and when to use it. Let's use it a little bit. Now, here's some homework. Show me that you learned what I was talking about in class, and we'll have a test next week on it. It was mostly through lectures, sometimes discussions, side projects, mock trials, that kind of thing. But it still followed that same pattern. Here's what you're going to learn. Learn it, and then show that you learned it. And that taught me memorization. It's a, uh, sometimes it gives you fundamental understandings as well as you go through the subject material. But the main goal and the measurement of that goal is whether or not you can memorize something and recall it later. Learn a solution, maybe a mathematical formula. Learn when it applies and when it doesn't learn the inputs and outputs of that solution, and then all you need to do is recall that solution at the right time, plug in the variables, solve it, and you're good to go. And critical thinking skills were mostly oriented around analyze a problem, figure out uh, what the right solution is from your repertoire of solutions that you've learned. And it's just memorization and recall. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it is a bit limited. You have to know the solution in order to recognize it. You can't see things that you don't know about. Um, which, it turns out that was a huge part of my problem in college. I was so used to being told what to learn, what solutions to investigate, but college lectures followed a slightly different pattern in high school. Started out the same. Here's what we're going to learn. Let's learn it. Let's learn how and when to use it. Let's use it. And then here's some homework. Oh, by the way, the test next week is on these other 30 chapters of the book that we haven't discussed at all. And that was hard for me because I wasn't being directed on what to learn, what to memorize. I tried some study groups. Those were a little helpful because you had other people giving other perspectives on what they thought was important. But we were still a bunch of people who were learning a subject. We weren't experts, and we didn't know what was important and what wasn't. So I really didn't know how to learn how to learn. So again, I dropped out, tucked my tail between my legs, and came home. However, in the next year, I did go and get a full-time job as an IT consultant. I had been keeping up with my chosen tradecraft of computers, and that had helped me land me that first real job. And then it took about five years for me to realize, because, you know, you drop out of college, you don't really want to reflect on that very much. But I started to realize I had learned how to learn. I wasn't picking up math or physics or English, but I was picking up Windows 95 and Windows 98 and Linux and NetWare and all sorts of things with networking and Y2K bugs, because now it's 1999. Uh, and I convinced myself, learning is what happens in a classroom. But that's not all there is to it. What I was doing for work, I hadn't classified as learning, but it absolutely was. On-the-job training, 
just the practical day-to-day -day parts of IT are all about learning. So I really did learn how to learn, and I didn't even know that I did. So how did I do that? Well, I talked about lectures before, but now I had availed myself of many other learning techniques outside of a classroom. And because it was 1999, the internet was taking off in ways it hadn't before, and a lot of other new techniques became available to me and everybody else in America. Now, some of these techniques include lectures. Not, my, not a big fan of them, but they work for other people. Uh, books, videos, whether it's a brief tutorial or an eight-hour series or anywhere in between. Uh, blog posts and all sorts of articles, research papers. Uh, don't just read reporting on research. Dive in and check out the research papers. They're very interesting. Everybody knows about answer sites like Stack Overflow. They're very helpful. Wikipedia articles, they give good summaries. They're not primary resources, but they link to a lot of primary and secondary resources that can give you more in-depth understanding. Newsletters are great. I subscribe to a number of weekly ones. Even if you just skim the headlines and hit delete, Maybe you'll recall that headline later when you run into a problem that's relevant. Uh, reading documentation. Of course, VMware docs, we've probably all viewed those. Tons of readmes associated with applications. Internal corporate docs, all those are very important. And then writing documentation. Once you learn a subject, for me, it really helps to try and teach it to other people. It solidifies the concepts. And if I, feel, if I can't explain it to somebody else, I feel I don't know it well, and I need to go back and learn it more. User groups, we're obviously all at a user group today. So there's lots of things you can participate in at user group. And I'm also gonna recommend, sometimes it's best to just passively listen, just show up and let other people talk. Hear what they have to say. Other, other perspectives are always great. And then once you practice some of those, maybe move into creating some content. Um, start a blog, start a podcast, make some videos, give a seminar, those kinds of things. Anything that's uh, generating the kinds of materials, especially the ones that you prefer. Mentorship is really important too. If you're working at a company that has a mentorship program, definitely suggest to get involved either as a mentor or a mentee. You should be able to learn pretty well in either direction. You know, the, the student or the teacher becomes the student kind of thing. Should, everybody should get a lot out of that. Uh, and then more formal teaching. I know some people who who've worked in IT and then they go to a community college and volunteer their time there to give some classes. It's hugely helpful. And then training in a more maybe informal setting, your colleagues at work or some people probably work for companies that do training, either as consultant or as a specific training company. And of course, practical applications. We all love to jump into projects and these days you can usually get started for anywhere as low as zero dollars. Uh, but you can also, you know, sometimes you're going to have to put in money, but it should be less than $100 to get started on those things. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars to get started these days. Uh, social media can be really great, too. Build a lot of connections with other people. You'll see things that didn't even occur to you to look at. And of course, speaking at conferences, that should be a, a given. That's what I'm up here doing, and I encourage anybody else who, who feels they can do it to give it a shot, uh, even if it's just a short five-minute talk. Now this isn't a comprehensive list. It's not ordered in any way of preference. There's no such thing as a best method for learning. There's just a variety of methods. Each one has its own strengths and weaknesses, and you may be under certain constraints that modify what, what you would prefer at a given time. You know, if I'm trying to replace a part of my garage door opener without having to pay an expensive repairman, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna look for videos that show like how to disassemble and reassemble it. But if I'm dealing with something that's broken in a data center where it's real noisy, videos are out. Stack Overflow is great. I can get a specific answer to a problem, and then I can go back later and review some other methods to give me a better understanding of whatever the problem was. Now, all of us do have different preferences, though, and that's important to remember. Obviously, I'm not a big fan of lectures. They, didn't, they haven't done well by me. Uh, but it's important to understand this and to assume that not everybody learns the same way that we do, especially when we're coaching other people in any sort of uh, formal or informal moments. For example, when I give training at work, um, not only do I give the class itself, but I make sure I record the session. I'll try and provide a transcript if I can. And then I'll put together some external links, some books, some other recommendations, uh, because I know some people just may not get a lot out of it, or maybe somebody's reviewing it later and needs some information that I just wasn't able to provide. Anything that helps people who don't get as much from my training specifically is a benefit because I certainly appreciate it when somebody else does that for me. And uh, I also want to remind people that 
different content is needed for different levels of fundamental knowledge. Uh, as you gain an expertise, it becomes very tempting if you're writing a blog or making a video to kind of speak to that expertise that you just gained. But some people may not have that expertise, some people may have more. So try and, tar try and think of how somebody who's a novice, somebody who's a veteran, and somebody who's an expert who knows more than you would, would want uh, and produce material so you can produce what's actually needed. And don't worry about being too simple or basic. I know a lot of people worry about that. Uh, I see a lot of diatribes on social media about, oh, yet another how to install something guide. It's always brand new to somebody. And I know because I certainly struggled with these one size fits all training that I don't want to cause or perpetuate that problem for others. So I can't emphasize that enough. So I just want to remind everybody learning to learn is not an empty platitude. It's a skill and it reflects our familiarity with multiple learning techniques and our ability to choose the right method at the right time. Those of us doubting whether we have the skill, we probably do. We probably just aren't framing it the right way internally. We may have to unlearn what it means to learn so that we can better understand it. And like all skills, you have to nurture it constantly. New learning options will be available in the future. I talked about in 1999 how things were brand new techniques that were available over the internet. You know, before YouTube, you couldn't find that video of somebody disassembling a garage door opener and putting it back together. And I'm sure in the future there will be more new techniques that we haven't imagined yet. And then of course old learning techniques may start to click with us if we find the right subject or the right teacher or the right situation. So practice, practice, practice all these different techniques and be sure to pass it on because the next generation of IT benefits from everything that we learn and that we're able to share with others. So I do hope that this talk has been helpful to you. It's my first time giving this talk. And I would appreciate any feedback. Find me here at the conference or on Twitter at rnelsonzero. Thank you.